Hey there, this is Philip from Beyond the Tabletop. In this video, I'm showing you how to do an oil wash weathering effect, which helps you create streaks, rain marks, and rust effects, mostly done on tanks. I've got it here on my Lehman Russ. As you can see here, it's got this really greasy rain streaked effect, and it perfectly blends in with the rest of the tank. So this technique is really easy to do and it won't take too long for me to run you through how to do it on another one of these tanks. So here's a little side by side comparison. The one on the right is the one I'm going to be working on today. It's already at a decent tabletop standard and it's had some rust effects and chipping effects already applied to it. I've previously covered these techniques in my Storm Chimera series so please check out those videos if you want to see how I've done them. Just by applying the oils you'll end up with a finished tank that is on the left. So for this video, I'm gonna show you how to apply the weathering effects just to this one side of the track. Now, before you do anything else, you need to give the tank a good coat in gloss varnish. You can use purity seal spray, or if you've got an airbrush, you can use an airbrush gloss. As a worst case scenario, you could brush on a gloss varnish such as Ard Coat, although I wouldn't recommend that because you're gonna get lots of brush strokes potentially appearing on your tank. Instead, you'd be much better off just buying an aerosol can version like Purity Seal. The gloss varnish does two things. Firstly, it protects the paint underneath from the white spirit that you'll be using, and it just protects the work that you've done and in theory, if you muck up anything with the oil wash, you can just use more white spirit to knock off the oil. The gloss varnish also acts as a better surface for the oil to go on, and what you'll notice is there's a lot of capillary action happening. So the oil in the recesses will start to travel along down, and this capillary action can create a very detailed wash. So you need a few things to create your oil wash. You need some burnt umber, which is a dark brown color, and then you just need some black. These are just artist oils. You can pick them up from any good art shop. And then to thin these, you need white spirit. I've used artist white spirit because it's quite easy to get hand of, although you can use more industrial strength white spirit. Some of them vary in smells and how pungent it is. Now, whichever you go with, you need to make sure you're doing this in a well-ventilated area. And as a word of warning, your models will smell of oils for quite some time after painting them. And it takes quite a long time for that smell to go. So I've got an old mixing pot and I've got my burnt umber. You just need to apply a very small amount, probably that much. And then I'll just scrape it off like so. So ideally you just need to do a 50-50 mix, which will give you a very dark brown look and then pour in some white spirits and then give it a stir. Don't use anything like a good paintbrush for this because you're just going to ruin it. So now it's all mixed in, you can see it's really watery in consistency. You don't want it to be thick at all, it's not meant to be like paint. The consistency just actually needs to be like a normal Games Workshop wash. You can always err on the side of caution and go slightly thinner, that shouldn't be a problem. And in fact, the thinner it is, the better the capillary action will be on the tank. And just have a tissue on hand for cleaning up your tools and brushes. I've also put in a decent amount of white spirit into a spare pot. I'll be using that for cleaning my brushes as I go. As I mentioned, the tank has already had its gloss varnish, so I've not shown you that on camera. I'm gonna start by applying the wash to all the rivets, along with all the recesses, so all the seam lines and joins. So there's quite a lot and it will get quite messy, but don't worry, you can always undo what you've done with more white spirit. So I just need to put a little bit of the oil wash on to my brush. And then I can start by applying it to all the rivets and recesses. And as you can see that capillary action zooms it down straight away. So that means it's really thin and it's doing a really good job. Now you could go slightly heavier and it makes it slightly thicker and it'll give you a slightly darker look. I think for this it will be fine. What I'm going to do is just carry on applying the wash to the rivets, just working my way around the whole tank, um, just making sure I know which sections that I've done so I'm not repeating myself either. I sort of tend to work around one side. Uh, say right to left and then keep going. It doesn't matter if you're a little bit messy, 
or if you cover too much up. If you want a much more cleaner tank, I would be a lot more careful at this stage. But if you want a really rusted tank, a really weathered looking one, then you could be really messy at this stage. I'm probably going to be somewhere in between the two. As you can see with the capillary action you just need to dab it in a few places and the oil and the gloss varnish does the rest of the work for you. So at this stage it's also just going to be like a normal wash on a tank or a normal model but the magic will happen once the oil dries a little bit and you can start doing some blending and then you can create the sort of rust streaks rain marks and that gives it a much sort of better finished completed look just go over these top ones again So this section I can sort of get away with being a bit messier because there's an awful lot of detail in there so it can all get covered up. Likewise with this grill, I want to kind of cover it all so it can be a little bit messy. these like big rivets I tend to just cover the whole thing rather than being too detailed just because it's a lot easier and quicker you can then just go over a few places if you don't think you've got enough on there so as you can see it's finished and quite wet you just need to set that aside for an hour to let it air dry or you could hit it with a hair dryer and it should dry off in a few minutes ready for the next step don't forget to use your little tub with some white spirit in just to clean off your brush and then just wipe it down you just need to be really careful with the oil because it can get everywhere and it is really hard to get rid of so just be super careful, keep everything as clean as possible. Don't forget to put a lid on your white spirit because white spirit evaporates quite easily. So if you leave this open in a few hours, you'd have probably lost about half of it. With the oil dry or at least partially dry, all you need is a small dry brush to start blending some of those oils. And literally all you need to do is start by just streaking down and that will start to create the blending. Now, if that's not happening, because this is dried, all you need to do is drop the brush in a small amount of white spirit. Just try and get the excess off because you don't want too much on. And then you should be able to start blending the oils. So as you can see, it starts to create a like streaked effect. The more oil you have to start off with, the more prominent it will become. And then once that starts to dry a little, you can then go back and blend those details in a little bit more. So I like to, every time there's a rivet, just do a very small amount of blending, just creating a little streak downwards to create a rust effect. You can always shift it back up if you think it's too much. So 
which is right there, and then you can move it down. So you can use more or less white spirit on this brush to increase or decrease how much of a blending effect that you want to create. So I'm now just going to go all over and apply this to the rest of the tank. You can of course always like dab some extra and shift it around to create sort of random splotches of oil. So if you want to undo anything, all you need to do is just dab your brush uh, in some white spirit, which I've just done off camera, and then you can always go back and sort of go upwards uh, to push that oil back up to where you might want it to go. If you've got some, say, in here, you can just sort of brush it off by constantly uh, wiping and spreading it thinner along the tank, so you can move it down to the bottom, so you've now tidied up that area there. Um, say I want to remove it from some of this rivets you can just apply a bit more and okay now I've got it here but you can just keep pushing it down and down until it's now part of that bottom section what you want to do is when you're doing the oil and sort of streak effects is probably the largest streaks want to be on these kind of like bolt heads here uh, you don't necessarily want any of the smaller rivets to be as large because it just wouldn't look as realistic. So maybe these should be a tiny bit softer or a bit shorter. Uh, you also want to make sure that your streak lines are pretty straight. You don't want them going off at an angle. So that one might look like it's going to the left slightly. So all you want to do is just change your angle and come in from that side just to make it longer. And then if there's too much, you might just want to move this down blend it into the rest of that tank. Uh, it's a bit harder the more wet it is, um, the more dry it is, the more softer blends that you can get. Going back to the original tank for a minute you can just see how softer the blends are on this tank and the rain streaks aren't quite as pronounced. So I'm just going to try and replicate this, uh, let the oil dry a bit more and then try and smooth out some of those rain streaks. I went back and applied the wash a couple more times. I even added in some more burnt umber into the mix just to give it a really nice kind of greasy brown color in a few places. And then I let that dry and I blended it and then I kept on using white spirit to move it around and then dry it off again and then blend it some more until I got something that I'm happy with. Uh, so here's the finished result. Now for some people this might be far too much and you might have preferred it earlier. But for my Krieg tanks, I want something that's really war-torn, rusting and aged, which is why I go for a really heavy weather effect. If you're a Renegade or a Chaos player, this sort of style might also fit you perfectly. Whereas if you're trying to do a less weathered effect, such as if you're a Space Marine player, then you might want to tone down the amount of oil that you put on and do less blending effects and use it more as a wash. You can also use this effect in different ways. So if you used more of a grey colour, you could create rain streaks, whereas I've gone for a more rust and oil effect that's been caused by the rain. Now, once you're finished with this, you want to set your tank aside and just leave it for a few days, ideally to sort of air dry, let loads of oils dry out naturally, 
You can, of course, go over it with your hairdryer again if you want to speed up that process. What you want is for them to be completely touch dry and for those oils to have dried out. Once you've done that, you want to go over it again with your gloss varnish. That will give you a nice, solid, protective coat. And then lastly, you want to spray it with a matte medium, such as Lamian medium, to remove the gloss finish. There's also more techniques that you can do, such as mud effects and weathering powders. I'll hopefully get around to those in future videos. While oil washes might seem scary, they are actually really fun to do. So if you are a tank painter, I suggest you go out there and give this a go. And that's it for this video. I've demonstrated what it looks like with one side. I've obviously still got the rest of the tank to do, so I'm just going to do that in my own time. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a like. Feel free to drop me a comment below. And don't forget to share this video with anyone that you think might benefit from this technique. And lastly, if you've not subscribed and you want to see more of these kinds of videos, please hit that subscribe button. Until the next one, take care.